Okay, so I'll be starting with a user interface. So this is one of the most important topics in Android because you know user interface is all about what a user sees on the screen, how you interact with the screen and all that. So when you download an app or something, you first see the user interface, the GUI of it. How is the color? How is the background? How are the graphics? So I'll not be telling you very uh, deep in the designing part of it, how to design it, but a basic components of it. This is a kind of revision uh, of all of all that you have experienced. You know. Uh, okay. Before that, let me ask: How many of you are currently using a smartphone? Okay, maximum of you. And. Uh, how many of you do not have any idea about any smartphone? You have never seen in your hand, I mean, never felt it, any kind of smartphone, tablet, Windows, Android, anyone? Okay, nice, no one. So you all know what smartphones are, what tablets are, or any Android or smartphone device, okay? So we will be relating of your experiences, how you look, uh, look at things from a user point of view and how you have to look them from the developer's point of view, okay? So these are the contents. And my session will be both theory as well as practical. Uh, I'll be giving you small demonstrations about uh, various apps. I'll not be uh, making ap applications here, but uh, I have code with me and I'll be, uh, I'll be go going through them, okay? So you can have a glimpse of it. So these are the contents I'll be uh, going through introduction to user interface, layouts, UI controls, menus and toasts, uh, notifications, dialogues, sliding drawer, drag and drop, and fragments. So let's start with the first topic. Uh, as I told, user interface is all about the screen. What do you look at? What do you touch? What do you drag, drop? And where your touch uh, leads you to? Okay. So Android provides a number of pre-built structures you are you many of you have already developed android applications so you know you can drag drop a button here and there and you don't have to code much for a button for at least making a button okay so uh, android has a variety of pre-built structures dialogues notifications menus then uh, there are two ways to uh, declare or implement user interface uh, write java code like uh, in java you can you used to do uh, you make you used to make a button in Java file and then implement the code for it. Uh, here also you can do the same thing, write Java code, make a button and uh, write the logic also for it. Uh, or there is one more option, you go to your XML file, uh, declare the button, drag and drop a button, uh, then you will see its properties and you can uh, change its properties your way. You can define or declare some of the properties in the XML file. So uh, one more thing, in this session I'll be repeatedly talking about Java file, XML file, Java file, XML file because UI is all about these two files, okay. So and a uh, better approach is to start with XML file, drag and drop something, then go to Java file and write the logic for it, okay. Uh, then layouts, so what are layouts? Exactly, absolutely. And the way in which the components are arranged, when you when you design a website or any application, you have a idea that a text view should be here, image should be here, button should be down somewhere. So all this is layout. Okay. Uh, again, the layouts you can uh, define them in two ways: in Java file and in XML file. So I'll skip this. Then types of layouts. There are uh, four types of layouts. Linear, it is again subdivided into two parts, horizontal, vertical, then table layout, grid layout, and relative layout. I'll uh, explain these by an example. So I'm switching my U uh, workspace. You have this option also. Oh yeah, UI workspace. So I have my source code, various source code applications in this workspace. I'll just run it and show you the code. Okay, so this is my layouts. Layouts we define in XML file, okay. 
let me first run in and show you, uh, run and show you the output. if the AVD is not running, it will take a lot of time to start the AVD and run an application. Better you keep it running in the background so that it will not take much time for an application to run again. Okay. Okay, let me go through the XML file till then. So this panel in the between is a palette. Okay, here you get all the widgets. You can drag and drop something here. Okay and it contains text view, uh, text fields, then list view, expandable list, everything, almost all the widgets that we use commonly are present here. You don't have to write a code for them. You just have to write the logic for them. Okay, so this is the graphical layout and this is the XML part. Okay, here I've used a linear layout. So let me explain each and every uh, property or attribute of it. So when I drag and drop this linear layout, I get this pre-built. I have not written this code. I have just dragged from here and dropped it here. Layout I'll get here. Linear layout, drag and drop it here and you will, this file is made by itself. Nothing I have written in it, okay? Uh, except the text, of course. So this is my linear layout, then button button ID. This attribute is important because uh, when you write the logic for it, you have to refer uh, to the XML file button. Okay, There should be a link between the Java file and the XML file. That link is provided by the ID. That recognition of a separate, uh, of each and every attribute is provided uh, by ID. Okay, Each and every widget, sorry. So this button is supposed a widget and its recognition it's, it gets from ID. So then layout width, height, DP is density pixel. You can decrease, increase according to your wish. There are some more units. It is one of, DP is one of the unit. Okay. Then height, wrap content. Wrap content means it will take the width, uh, height according to its content. Also the width according to its content. If we write wrap content and width then all the attributes are same. Text you can write manually. Okay. Let's see the output. Yeah, so this is my output. I hope it's little bit visible till the end. If not, tell me, I'll go to the slides and we'll explain you. So I'll first start with the linear layout. This is just a button, okay. Uh, as we have seen, linear layouts are of two types, horizontal and vertical. So this is the vertical one. Here everything will be arranged in a simple line, as you can see. And horizontal in a horizontal line. Okay. Then comes grid layout. In grid layout, uh, things are arranged in the form of rows and columns. Okay. So this middle button 1.3 is slightly longer and the button below it, 2.3, does not occupy whole of the space. Uh, that is, it follows a property called wrap content that we have seen. Okay, it occupies space as required by its text. We go back and table layout. Here again, everything is arranged in the form of rows and columns. Uh, the only difference is that this button 1.3 is longer and 2.3 occupies whole of the space. That is, it follows a property match parent, a space as taken by its parent. It will occupy all of it. Okay, so that is the difference I'll show you once again. Grid does not occupy whole of the space and table it does occupy. Then is relative layout. As you can see, there is no actually a pattern. You can drag and drop anything and everywhere. Also, in a XML file, you can have as many layouts as you want. You can have a linear layout, then inside it a table layout and a relative layout. So it depends, okay, according to your UI, how complicated your UI is. You can have as many layouts as you want. Then let's go to the next topic. Then UI controls. These are the, some of the very basic. When you go to a website, you register somewhere, something. These are the things you fill up and or you see in the in a simple form. Okay. So text view is a label kind of thing. You cannot override on it. Edit text, you can write something. There is a text given where you can write. Button, you know, you click and something happens. You go to somewhere. 
okay then radio button uh, check boxes uh, these are basically options various options and spinner this is the form which i'm going to explain okay this is the final output which i'll be receiving i'm closing this here comes form i'm running it before and so that doesn't take much time okay now this is my java file and in res folder layout comes my xml file okay and in xml file graphical layout so yeah it is not showing me the graphical layout because api level is not correct so i'll reduce to a lower version yeah now it's showing me something see sometimes it happens that in graphical layout you don't see a perfect thing but in your device you see how it is going to look like because finally your output is for the device so better you check things with your device uh, it may vary in xml file so this is my xml file here i'm using the table layout then table row in table layout you have to define attributes in a table row okay so this is table row then end of table row in first row i have a text view and edit text again more or less the same attributes id we have seen width height text edit text ems is the size of it then second row third row again radio button are described in radio group okay you first the drag and drop radio group then in that actually when you drag and drop from here as many radio buttons as you want it will automatically come in this you don't have to write it then end of first row okay so let's see the java code now yeah here i have declared variables a spinner type all these are classes spinner button check boxes radio button i have declared these variables then this is my array this is my java code here i have declared variables i'm repeating then this is array array i have used for the spinner okay spinner is a, is a kind of list when i click on the list number of items will be displayed to me then edit text yeah here now like i told whatever i declare in xml file and i write uh, logic in java file there has to link between the two things so this line gives me provides me the link this final edit text the name of edit text r dot id dot edit text one this was the id there okay so this line provides the link then button then here comes spinner okay spinner id then array adapter array adapter is actually used to pull out the content from the array to the spinner okay it is kind of bridge between the array and spinner all this code you will get on github okay so if you want to try it later then this is event handling on the button reset button and submit button here nothing is there if you click on this usually what happens when you click on submit button your data goes to the database but here since i'm not showing you any database on clicking both the buttons a uh, form will reset okay so mainly same uh, same code for reset and submit button in this case so let's see the output yeah, i'm just changing from to portrait view okay it might be not not be visible at the end but so i'm writing my name raiha then female this are radio buttons okay now this is the spinner it gives me name of various countries drag up and down and we'll get the complete list uh then is ch uh, check boxes the main difference between radio buttons and check boxes is this in radio button you can select only one option right but in check boxes you can select 
even all the options it doesn't matter so click on submit button it will reset okay so this is my form now the next thing menus and tools so uh, tell me what is a menu in your smartphone when you first open the smartphone what do you do menu option so what is a menu option come on guys you are sleeping wake up what is a menu option where do you find a menu option if not in a smartphone then where else desktop so what is a menu gives you some options okay so in the same way there is a kind, there are various kind of menu in this particular uh, lecture i'll be uh, telling you about only two main options menu and pop up menu okay so options menu is when you click on the menu button what you get that is the options menu and pop up menu is a pop up list i'll let you know what is the difference again we moved and toast is a you know what a tool tip is when you select something and not click on it you get a tool tip so toast is not exactly a tool tip but a kind of tool tip or a feedback about a operation so again the code like i said i'll be jumping from java to xml file that's what i'm doing yeah i'm running this here comes my java file and my xml file Okay, so this is my main XML file. Here I have only a text view, nothing else. Okay, and here this is what I have written. Click on the menu to show menu items. Now this is my another menu file. Okay, what happened again? Again, I am reducing the API level. you may find these kind of error these are you know i am i was working on some other pc and i transferred this so some default changes may happen so just that okay it's showing me no xml content that's fine yeah so it is little different from the main xml here you don't have an option to drag and drop anything okay yeah now every option of yours when you click on the menu button every option is described in the form of an item so this is item bookmark okay it has certain attributes id icon like that so here i have six uh, options in the options menu so all these are described in item attribute Uh, see it can be a little boring but you know from the developer's point of view these are the basic things from where you have to start your design click on the menu button to show menu item i'm clicking here here these six menu items are displayed i'll change the to landscape yeah so here these are the items okay that we declared in the uh, menu.xml file so if i click on any one of these search is selected so this is the toast that tool tip i was talking about okay again i click on menu button some other item delete is selected it goes it comes and goes it comes on button on some click and goes by itself okay that time you have to mention in your code so now let's see the code so a uh, menu inflator is used to initial, uh, initiate the xml file that is r dot layout dot menu for for an item you have to write r dot id dot that id name and for file that is an xml file in this case you have to write r dot layout dot the file name 
now event handling a simple switch case is used switch case you must be aware it's same as c++ or java switch case you write uh, when you click on different item a toast appears with a different text that's it so this is the coding for toast yeah okay this one so here toast dot uh, dot length short so this is the duration Sh length short if you give uh, length medium or length long it will be appear for it will appear for a, a long time okay comparatively long time so this is about the java file here right now i'm showing very basic simple code each a separate file for uh, every widget but when you will be creating your applications it will be much more complicated than this is okay so just to start with so that you don't get afraid of android i'm starting with this okay now next is pop up menu okay yeah here's my java file and also if you have more than one java file don't forget to add it in android.manifest file in manifest.xml sorry now this is my graphical layout this is the main file here i'm displaying a button on click of this button a menu will appear and this is my menu layout.xml file so here in every layout i'm displaying a text view basically these are toasts okay now in java file again inflator here i'm using layout inflator to pull that content from the xml file okay now event handling is done on this button okay show pop up window on clicking it will enable it and you click somewhere outside it will disable it i'm not going very deep into the code because you won't be able to understand it in this point of time for sure because okay forget it so i'm telling you just the brief idea of it what is going on uh show pop up three options it will show you and when you click on any one of them click one see here you see three methods click one click two click three because i had three items in my options menu so on clicking one you will get one toast on with some other text on second click you will get get another toast with some other text that's it so this is my output the control f11 is the shortcut to change this uh, form from layout to uh, from portrait to landscape or vice versa then search i click search tab search so this is my toast toast is a simple one line thing you know if you want to show that something is happening on the click write just write down toast now next is notifications now since you all are users of smartphone you know very well what notifications are you just now had a look uh, had a brief discussion about it so what are notifications other than a whatsapp example when you when you are using a uh, smartphone at what times you get a notification message <coughs> sorry updates okay what else Reminder. sorry Reminder. reminders okay battery low when you are using a smartphone when do you get it when when you click on camera you don't get a permission permission thing okay fine uh miss call for example so your yeah, notification is a message when you slide down uh, you know on your home screen you get a black pane panel kind of thing so that is a notification area so and uh, when you slide down that is called a no notification drawer okay so these are two technical terms nothing else else you know about the notification so let's go to the code again my java file and my xml file 
Now, XML file contains simply a button, nothing else. When I when I'll click on this button, I'll get a notification. Okay, so notification manager is used to create a notification here. Event handling is done. Now you can see here deprecation. Deprecation, as you know, you saw in the first lecture that API levels uh, come every every year, every month. So some of the uh, methods get deprecated and some new thing, better thing comes into play. So if you have written a code into an earlier version, so this will give you an error. So if you can want, if you can change it, otherwise it will give you an option that it will display here deprecated, that's it. Your code will run, but it will give you an option deprecated, uh, give you a line deprecated, that's it. Okay, then notification manager is used to create a no notification. Then here is my notification text. This is my notification file, start notification. Then you have been notified. After clicking, what comes in the notification is this. Continue with what you are doing. This is, I'll let you know when you when we see the output. Then intent is used to switch between the notification and to the previous activity. Because when you are doing something and notification comes, you suddenly jump to that notification. So intent is used to, you know, pass to that notification and then to come back. Even between activities, to jump from one activity to another, intents are used. Now this is the output. Uh, send notification. Now here up a notification has arrived. Okay, so slide it down. So this is my notification drawer that I slide it down. Okay. Now you have been notified and continue with what I'm doing. So when I click on this, I'll come back to my previous activity. Okay. So even you can do a thing when you click on this notification, you you can give a URL or something. So it will jump to your browser. So a lot of things you can do with the notification. Okay, then next is uh, so this is the notification drawer slide up down and this is the notification area okay in technical terms now dialogues uh, dialogues are something you know we, we use ms office usually and when we type something and we don't save it we we try to close it we get a dialog do you want to save or you don't want to save so that is simple dialog in dialogues it just asks the user to uh, input something to make a decision yes or no cancel something that is a small window, it asks user to respond, to take a decision, okay. So, so XML file contains a simple button, I will click on that and I will get a dialog box. Then this is my Java file, again I will go to the event handling here. Uh, see when you implement on click for a button, you can do that in XML file also, there is a property you can go there and write on click and even here you can set that. Uh, there is a basic difference between the two and that you will have to explore. Okay. So on click listener is a method of view class. See every widget comes under view. Now on click. Here I am setting a title, a background, then here set positive button yes. On yes, what will happen? That I will go to the main, act that my main activity will be finished. And on no, what will happen? Nothing will happen, the dialog will get cancelled, that is it, okay. So alert dialog builder is used to create a dialog box and dot show method to show it. So this is so alert box, uh, click yes to exit, suppose I click no, nothing will happen, that is my dialog box will cancel. Yes, I will go to my previous activity, that was notifications, okay. Now the next thing is sliding drawer, so this we have already seen something in notifications part when you slide down. So. Uh, I will let you know sliding drawer is used to hide some content, okay. This basically when you design something it is from the designer's point of view, you 
do something sliding here and something else comes so it's good to look at and it is better than uh, you know clicking a button sliding is more cool to design okay so it comes up with a handle you touch a button or something and a handle appears uh, it is used as an overlay like i said like a as a cover you cover something with with sliding door so there is one more i guess yeah fragments then my session will be over java file xml file okay my xml file has an image view it's giving some error yeah see it's giving me an error so there is nothing wrong with the code only thing i have to do is clean the project because it has it has got some inbuilt error that it sometimes it happens with id usually it is confused or it gets scrapped with something inside it and it gives an error okay here a button i'm declaring then sliding door okay a variable of sliding door class then again i'm referring to the xml file instantiating these buttons okay let's see the output first to understand better i'm clicking on the small button i get this something has appeared so this is just to act as an overlay that is just to hide something and this activity will be as it is okay nothing will happen to that when you click it again again that will i mean click this button again the previous activity will appear okay and again toast you know toast is the simplest to tell you that something is happening a simple code yeah sliding door so here sliding uh, on door open listener method is i've used to open the sliding door then here set background set background you can use here also and in the xml file also both the ways okay then on door closed what will happen and on door open what will happen that you have to mention in these two methods okay that's it basically you have to go more into the logic of things okay because declaring things and moving here and there is very easy in android uh, then comes the next thing the drag and drop see uh, smartphones are all about your touch the system should be able to recognize your touch okay uh, so this feature is very important uh, instead of using buttons or clicks everywhere you it's better to use drag and drop from user point of view you know it is more attractive for a user i'll give you a basic application of drag and drop so oh, again i'm repeating all the slides and everything will get on github if you want we'll provide you with the link okay so this is my output here these are my containers okay these background things dark blue or so rectangle boxes and this is my image so what i'm doing i'm just dragging here dropping it here i have mentioned some restrictions that it should if i drag and drop here then only it should be visible if i drag it outside it should not be visible to me anymore okay so it is kind of delete thing that is happening so let's see the code in xml file i'm just displaying a linear layout and that an image view those are the rectangular images okay then here comes my image one on touch what will happen touch listener is introduced here okay now here start drag set visibility if it is inside the view then it is uh, i mean inside the white thing it is invisible okay 
this is on drag listener. So basically it has four components, if I drag and drop on those four components it will be visible to me and if it is somewhere outside those four components it will not be visible to me. This is what the logic is, you have to restrict to a particular area, okay, these are container, that is it, okay. And everything like I said layouts are a part of view, they are, yeah, they inherit view with, with them. So, for details of the code, you can contact us anytime. Then the last thing, fragments. You have seen what are activities. So, fragments are sub-activities. Uh, switching to an activity could be time consuming or you know, you do, may not want to be a separate activity, but uh, you want that it should be uh, somewhere a part of one activity, but the code should be different or the thread should be different. So. It is a kind of sub activities, the activity can have many fragments. So when a fragment is closed, when an activity is closed, all its fragments or sub activities are closed. It is uh, same as the life cycle of an activity, okay. But when a fragment is closed, an activity may not be closed. So a act life cycle of an activity affects directly the life cycle of fragment. Let us see the output first. Basically, uh, activity is one screen, right? So, what is what will be sub activities? It is a part, uh, this part is one fragment, this part is another fragment. It is one activity, but inside that, a different sub activities are playing, okay? Like your Facebook, you are, you are chatting somewhere and here a no notification comes, or your, you know, something else is happening on in, in the right side or on the left side. So that are different fragments of an activity, different things happening on a, sim on a single screen. So this is my list view, okay, let me change, yeah. so this is my list view is one activity, when I click here it is displaying me five images, so that is another fragment, sorry sub activity, list view is one sub activity, right side panel is another sub activity. Okay, I click on one, it will display me one image. So, so it may not be related, it, in this case they are related, but it may happen that are two independent fragments, they are not affecting each other, but something is going with both of them, independently or dependently. Okay, so for fragments you have two separate files, separate classes. Okay, so let us see the um, yeah, XML file, there is nothing, there is a list view, there is another fragment, okay. Then here comes list view that we just saw, numbers, then array adapter, this is array, now array is again used to pull the content from, uh, sorry array adapter is used to pull the content from array to the list view adding a fragment, fragment class is used to add a, to make a fragment then fragment transaction in this case both were uh, interlinked, something I did on first fragment something was happening on other fragment like I clicked four, four images. So this is a kind of interaction, it is dependent that which button I am clicking those number of images I am getting on the right side, okay, yeah. So I have created a list view, I have taken data from array. Now, this uh, position when I click here, I will send this data to my next active, next sub activity, sorry, okay. So here, and androids I have declared just to hold the count that if I display fourth number button or the text with four, four android images should be displayed to me. And then a simple basic for loop for number of images, right. So this is fragment and fragments are very important, You, if it is a complicated, uh, um, complicated GUI in Android, a fragment is a must thing, you should be comfortable with fragments, okay. 
yeah so this is all about user interface also you can you know to make a very good attractive exotic design there is one more thing styles.xml i'm not going into detail of it you can create a folder or raw here uh, basically if you uh, have to put any images or video files you have to create a folder in res folder named raw rao okay raw sorry and in that you can put images or anything else and also you can create a xml file styles.xml to create any good background for the button or any image in this whole thing whatever buttons i showed you were very basic normal buttons so if you don't want to use a image view and you want to use only a button and create something good out of a button you can use styles you can make styles.xml and it is very easy you can explore it it is just like an xml file some attributes here and there that's it okay so this is all about user interface um, like i told you this is very basic now you have to explore it okay as per your design okay now next session will be about data storage before that take 5 minutes break hello everyone today i am going to discuss with you about the data storage and the databases the main purpose of the data storage is to store the data it may be the structured data or the unstructured data structured data is the xml file xml file and the databases but unstructured data are the audio files video files which the machine cannot read easily in android we have the several option for saving our data like the shared preferences creation and the storage of arbitrary file types sqlite relational databases this this creation and the storage of arbitrary file types can be further classified into the internal storage or the external storage based on the uh, type of device okay so among these kind of databases which database we have we can choose for our uh, data so for this question we have the solution that it totally depends upon our specific requirement from our uh, security purpose we need to uh, keep that in mind that whether the data is private or the public to the user and from the logical point of view we need to remember that how much space uh, for our data or application we had required so these are the two important factor which we need to remember for uh, before creating the database or the storing the data now first is the shared preferences in the shared preferences we pass the package of information from one activity to the another activity in form of key value pairs and but the shared preferences cannot be used for passing the information from one one application to the another uh, application it is only applicable for the one activity to the another activity now in the form in key value pairs key uh, key are the typed as strings but the value should be the Uh, boolean long int float or string now shared preferences are managed through the java code or the special preference activity a special preference activity are nothing but a xml file we are we, we had read so far in the android now shared preference is stored unencrypted uh, format on a disk now next thing how we are going to create the preferences in java so for creating the preferences in java we need to import the class shared preference class into our android project uh, which consists of the set of the preferences now preferences instantiate with the mode mode of private there are some other mode are available like the mode uh, mode word writable we can use this mode uh, mode to set the mode for the our application data there are the two methods uh, by using which we can create our activity Uh, and preferences in the java and activity now preferences for current activity and the name set of preferences in preference for the current activity we create the object of the shared preferences and uh, and store the get preference method into it by passing the parameter as context dot mode private which is used to set the mode another way is the name set of preferences in which we use the existing preference and create the preferences for our data like preference name and the context mode private uh, is the parameter for the get shared preferences function now for using the preference activity 
we need to remember the certain points like preferences activity define and write values in, uh, to the disk automatically and values can be string boolean or list of string as i told earlier now preference activity defines in a layout xml file we can navigate to preference activity with an intent object now we are going to see the shared preference example for the shared preference example i have just uh, drag the to edit text box which is the uh, which, uh, on which we are going to create the our data and then two text view for displaying our data then two button on which certain activity perform to display the data now we are going to see the java code for this for creating the preference we are we need to import the package share uh, sh share prefer android dot content dot share preferences then we can access the, these widgets using the find view by id method now by after accessing these uh, widgets using the find view by id we can we can perform the set on click listener event for the button then on click of the button we can uh, call the activity in which we Uh, we call, call the two function which is the save preferences and load preferences in save preferences we pass the key value pair mem1 is the key and edit text1 dot get text dot two string is the value of the uh, edit text box from the ed, uh, from that edit text box we, i am going to take the data and store it into the key which is mem1 then load the preferences and display our data this is the code for save preferences active uh, save preference method you can see that in there i had created the share preference object and using the share preference dot editor i just add and use this use this data and store into the key you uh, key and, and just commit that to save the data then load preferences method is used to again load load that data load the data and uh, display into the text view by this way we can create the preferences and display i just run the project and show you the functionality of this this is the edit text box and on which i write something and just save then you can see the uh, uh, save mem1 below the save mem1 you can see your the data it is like the data is stored into the temporary cache then you can where you can display on to the screen only at the time you can if you want to see our data at the time and display for a long time on to the screen only then you can use this shared preferences shared preference is to just to display the activity from one activity to the another activity you can just uh, use the data into another activity by uh, using the shared preferences now file storage before moving towards the file storage we need to remember that before creating any file we need to give it, give it a proper name and the extension for creating our file file can be created and read on a persistent media then file storage has no sp uh, special uh, file type like storage store images xml or data file or anything else the file can be designate uh, for internal or the external storage from from here we can see internal storage internal storage is the internal memory of any device like the you are using the any smartphone or any phone you have the some internal memory that internal memory is limited and that internal memory is used for only the private data like android can you can see this point android can save the files directly to the device internal in storage these files are private to the application means when you install the particular application some files are directly stored into the internal storage means uh, like the database file if you install that file database files are installed into the internal storage when you uninstall that particular application then these files are automatically removed from the internal storage 
Now we can create a file using the open file output function with a parameter as file name and the operating mode. And we can display the existing file using the file input, file, open file input method by just passing the file name into it. Another thing is we need to remember is the file name with the extension should be proper. Now we are going to see the internal storage example. In an internal storage example, I just created the two edit text box. In the first edit text box, I just I will enter the name of the file which I want to display and the another te edit text box in which I will store the content of the data and that con data I will store into that particular file which I had created above and this save my, this button will do this activity on uh, click event. So let's see the code of that Java code for this. In this I just I had not used any extra package and by just I had only used the Java packages like the java.io dot file not found exception which uh, sometimes when exception file not found exception occur then it will take care of it. Then file output is stream to display the output file then IO exception rest of all are the common Android widgets Android packages then here in the same way as earlier I just assess these uh, widgets using the find view by id function then on the click of the button I just uh, do these activities like uh, assess the assess the file content edit a text box contents uh, and store into the string like file name is stored into the file name string then content is stored into the content string then I created the file output stream object and using this object into this object I just uh, created the file using the open file output method in this I passed that file name which I had uh, taken from the edit text box one then that file name is created you, and uh, I had also passed the math mode of that file. Now then after creating that file I just call the write function and write that content which is which saved in the another edit text box and display into that and, and close that file. After that file file closed and uh, another thing that toast is appears as you had learned in the previous lecture to notify that that file is saved. You can see the that file into the uh, DDMS. In DDMS you will find the name of the package and into that package you can see your file. Okay, so in this uh, in this you can find your package name matching to your uh, Android project and you can just pull that file from the DDMS only. I'll just run the example and show you the functionality of the code. Now this interface will appear and into this I just give the some name or to the file like file 1 and the content is this. Then you can see this toast appears file 1 is saved and you can drag this file from the DDMS only. Now next is the external storage. As we know external storage is the any external device which we attach to our device and any uh, Android phone, any smartphone or any devices. Now every Android com compatible devices supports a shared external storage that we can use to save the files. This can be removable storage media or like the SD card or the any internal storage sometimes act as an external device. Now files saved to the external storage are word readable and can be modified by the user when they enable the USB mass storage to transfer the files on a computer means any external device is the publicly accessible means any you any user can just access the content of the file by just enabling it to the particular system when we attach that that external device now external storage example for this external storage I just create a, I just drag and drop the image view into our layout and I want to display the images into this layer into this image view. So for this purpose I just written a piece of code like 
in this i just assess the image view by using the find view by id then create a bitmap file into which bitmap file i just call the bitmap factory dot decode file function into which i pass the parameter which is the path of that image which is the mnt slash sd card slash images dot jpg this mnt is the default external 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 storage path into the akash tablet then i just set the that bitmap file into the jpg to view the image using the set image bitmap function sqlite relational database as we much aware of the sqlite relational database that is for the structure data we can uh, use any structure data uh, is using the sqlite relational database sqlite relational database provide as the function functionality to manage the any structure data in android provides the built in support for sqlite all the classes and interface are present in android dot database dot sqlite package now database files are is stored local to the app means these files are stored into the internal storage as i told earlier means uh, when you uninstall the particular uh, app then its, its database files are uh, automatically uninstalled and removed from the internal storage now to share the structured data with other apps consider a creating a custom content provider as you have seen in the third lecture custom content provider are used to share the structured data now sqlite database example now for the uh, sqlite database i just created the three xml files this is the main dot xml on which i just create the two button save data and the check data in save data i just store the data into the database and in check data i will retrieve the data from the database now in save dot xml i just created the form and fill the i will fill the in detail and save and click the save button then the data will be stored into the database if i click the perform if i click the back button then it will lead me to the main dot xml in main dot xml if i click the check data then it show the this layout in which i just display the they all the data into the database like you can see the name telephone number skype id and the address using the list 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 view now for for using the sqlite database we need to create the functionality for the database for this purpose i just created the data manipulator dot data manipulator class into this we need to import the some important packages like the sqlite dot, dot sqlite database sqlite open helper sqlite statement sqlite database is responsible for managing all the database activity like create creating the database deleting the database and executing the query and sqlite open helper is responsible for managing the managing the version like the version management and the creating the database then sqlite statement is used for representing the statement which is independent from the database query now i just created the data manipulator class into this i i defined the some global variable like to define our database then i created the object of the sqlite database sqlite database db then i had created the string insert which is used to store that values i had inserted into the data into the form for storing the database into the database it is the normal sql query for inserting the values into the database now data manipulator method is called the into this method i use the open helper in uh, using the open helper i i can create the database and using this database i i had created the get writable i call the get writable database function using this function i can create the writable database into which i can write the data then i just compile the statement and pass the query into it for inserting the data into the database now i create the function insert 
using this insert function, I can bind the value to the particular column into the table. Now this is the delete function for deleting the database from the using the list we can uh, we can assess the all the rows of the table and display into the list uh, into the layout. Now these are the various methods uh, we can create uh, into the for using the database using the SQLite database package. Now from our application purpose, we first see the save data dot java file. Into this, I just create the two button, add button and home button. Home button lead to the home page and add button will insert the data into the database. On the click of the add button, one activity fires which which, which create the data, which store the data into the database. You can see we can assess, assess a, each, at, each edit text box using the find view by id method and store the content of the edit text box into the string. Then data manipulator function is called which insert the data into the database by using the this dot ds dot insert function. Into this, I pass the parameter as a string, which uh, which contain the value from the edit text box. Then a dialog appears, which uh, which appear when we save the data into the database. That information saved successfully. Now another is the check data dot save. In this, I I created the list array list into which I store the data from the database and using the data manipulator, I assess the, all the row from the database, all the data from the database by using that dm.selectAll function, which is similar to the SQL query, SQL query like select star from the table. Then I created the for loop up to the number of the times row is present in the database then display the data using this for loop now i'll run the project okay so is it is already running now click the save data and form is appeared. And click the save button. Then it dialogs appears that saved information saved successfully. Then click the yes and it will store into the database. Now click the back button and check the data. You can see the data stored into the database. So that's all. Thank you everyone. Good evening everyone. Uh, and this is the last session on Android. Now we will be looking at Android media. So I will just go into basics of that. So what is Android media? Media? Anyone like? What exactly is media? Music, audio, images. So how do you uh, how do you display an image and then play an audio file and then play also a video file? So for that, uh, this is what we'll going through. Like one is image view. It's a widget to display uh, images. Like there are many apps you see like. Uh, you have uh, images in that. There are many apps all around. So you see images in that. So for that image view is responsible. So uh, it's a widget. On that you can have your images. And then comes audio. Uh, there is a class called as media player class. So with that you will be able to play audio like uh, music players. You have music players and you listen to audios. Uh, so how, do, how does that audio file be uh, played? 
so for that media play class is responsible so with that you can listen to any song like uh, any your any favorite song of yours and then comes video view it's again a widget which is used to display which, which is used to play audio file like uh, youtube also plays that audios and all uh, videos and all everything so first we'll look at uh, image view so it it is used to display images and icons and everything and it you can load images from anywhere like it can be internal sd card external sd card even from a web link also anywhere you can load the image so i will just uh, show you uh, this is the example like whatsapp uh, like this is this is an example like you have profile pic how that profile pic is being displayed so that's a image view widget on that a video is uh, on that a image is being displayed so that image is, is being captured from uh, what we say uh, web, web, web link from somewhere from server server and then we have chat list there also you can find very uh, various images all those are image view widgets on that image view widgets you will find that each and every image so how do you go about image view so in in our palette we have that image view widget we just drag and drop into the our graphical view so along with graphical view uh, xml code is automatically generated you can have a look at xml code so that's the id uh, that's very important to refer like you need to refer for or if you want to have a on click list on click listener on that on your image you can use that id particular id and then the most important part is that as a source android colon source src inside that drawable there is a image called as ic launcher so if you uh, if you have an uh, another image like named kitkat and you have it in your uh, drawable folder so after that uh, if you write at the rate drawable slash kitkat you will get uh, you will uh, your uh, when you run that code you will get output like this so it's a it's a kitkat image which is being displayed right now so the source part is very important inside drawable you just need to put your images and that's a java code which is used to refer like uh, a session before taken by raya she she, uh, she told you how to refer an id so this is how you refer and with this you can work on on click listener each and everything like uh, if you want to on click listener on that you can click an image and uh, get any event you want with that id you have just created object of that so this was about image view now android audio so like uh, you listen to music and all i said already like uh, you have media player uh, media player class so it's very simple like you create an object of media player then give a data source again the data source can be anywhere internal sd card the external sd card or the uh, web server or anywhere so you just prepare and then start in this in this way the audio file is being played as simple as that and then comes video view uh, so again it's a widget uh which is used to play audio uh, video files or video files and it's the same way you drag that video uh, video view widget and drop it onto your graphical view and then you you can adjust the size of your video like uh, size of like uh, width and height or everything so again the xml code is being generated you can see that id uh, that that's again an important is uh, important thing id uh, so that video view one is a id of that uh, video view so this is a java code that is used to play uh, play the video file so I, you can see that i have referred that uh, r.id. video view 1 that was the id of that video view and then the uh, path in string so uh, in the end you will find r.raw.file name so whatever is the file name of your uh, what is the file name like uh, abc. Uh, uh, abc. mp4 anything you can do any file you have you just need to Uh, name that abc you don't need to give the extension of that like a dot mp4 or uh, any any other thing so then you just pass that uh, path so that string particular string and then uh, set you uh, video url and then just start it. in this way you can just play your video it's as simple as that like uh, there is nothing difficult in uh, playing or media files and all it's very simple you can display image very simply then play a audio Uh, and then uh, play, again play a video so this is how it, this is how it will look like uh, when you play when you uh, play the audio uh, keep an audio file like this this is a bunny uh, file so uh, when you play this uh, video file it will look like this and you can have that uh, controller it can be fixed or it can be also like uh, hide you can also hide that particular uh, controller so this was all about android media it took only 5 minutes 
so uh, the android session is over and uh, any questions regarding the entire session okay thank you